Oh, this is so much heavier than it looks. Hey guys, it's me David and welcome back to another review. Today we have a Lego DC Comics set. It is the Bat Cave Shadow Box. <laughs> <laughs> the set number is 76252. We have a piece count of 3,981, and of course it's an 18 plus set. And it's gonna go on sale June 5th of 2023, kind of an odd date, for a retail price of 400 US dollars. Now the original rumor for this set was actually a price tag of $450, but it seems like last minute LEGO decided to change their mind and went with $400, which will definitely help in terms of whether I recommend this set or not. 400 seems a little bit more reasonable given the piece count and what you're getting here. Of course, I need to build this set and really find out what you're getting, but regardless, I think this is a cool set. I've looked at the fan feedback from the online reactions of this being revealed, and it's a 50-50 split. A lot of people either love it or hate it. You're either on one side or the other, it seems like. I'm definitely on the spectrum of liking this set. I think it's a very unique concept. Personally, the first time I saw this, I thought it looked like a mock. I thought it looked like something I would see at a Lego fan convention and be like, wow, that looks so cool. Lego's never gonna make that as a set. Here we are in 2023 with something that literally looks like something right out of a Lego convention and that is so cool to me and I, I like this. I like this experimenting, but it, Lego takes a step further here. This is a full on play set. When we turn it around, this whole bat cave opens up like a clamshell revealing an entire minifigure scale bat cave and that is just awesome. Now if you can't already tell, this is based on the 1992 Batman Returns film, which, you know, that's a good movie, but personally, I would have liked, you know, Batman animated series, maybe the Nolan series being made into a Batcave. Maybe one day we'll get that, but I do think, you know, if you're a fan of Batman Returns, this is gonna be a really cool set in that regard. And speaking of that, you'll notice, when we turn the box art on the top here, where you'll see these seven different minifigures that are included in the set, all of which I believe are exclusives. That's really awesome. They're all, of course, based on the 1992 Batman Returns film. Legos had this continuing trend over the last couple years to make like the Batwing, the Tumblr, you know, all those big Ultimate Collector series sets for DC and Batman specifically, but it's so nice and refreshing to see a minifigure scale set. Yes, this is maybe a strange concept to some of you, but I really wanna give this design a chance. So with that said, I do wanna thank Lego for sending this set over for review. And without further ado, let's get into the in-depth of the Batcave Shadow Box. So before we can enter the Bat Cave, we need to look at the sticker sheet. First off, there's 13 stickers, not the greatest, not the worst. Next, we have instruction booklets. There's four of them in this set. Unfortunately, it's all built at once, the entire shadow box. So it's not really something that you could build with someone else. But really, that's one of the rare downsides in this set. What is cool about it is just the overall design. And I know this is very opinionated. Some people don't like it. I think it's super cool. This whole shadow box idea of containing the bat cave in a more displaying like set is just so interesting to me. But words can't describe the feeling of opening up the bat cave, revealing all of this play inside the set. This is just unseen at like a $400 level like this, especially in the DC Marvel segment of Lego. This is just so much fun to look around and play around with and to just explore. And that's what's really cool about this. But let's not get carried away by the set just yet. Let's take a look at the seven minifigures, first of which is Michael Keaton's Batman. We've gotten this type of figure before in the Batwing. It's a full molded Batman, so no like fabric cape. And then underneath you have a normal Batman head and torso. Next we have Bruce Wayne or Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne. And I love this figure and I believe it's exclusive to this set. Unfortunately, he uses the same Batman head, which is weird to me. Then we have this slightly new Batman suit. Unfortunately, this is going to pop out into other DC sets that are going to be releasing throughout the summer wave. So for now it's exclusive, but it won't be for long. Next up, we have Alfred with his little teacup here. Honestly, a great looking figure, simple, but elegant. That is what I would expect from a Lego Alfred minifigure from the Batman Returns 1992 movie. Great looking figure overall. Next, we have Catwoman, the Michelle Pfeiffer, you know, skin tight leather <laughs> Catwoman, very accurately portrayed here in Lego, looks great. Next up is Max Shriek from the, again, Batman Returns film. Great looking minifigure, maybe not as desirable as some of the other figures, like Danny DeVito's Penguin, which I think looks fantastic. I think Lego knocked it out of the park with this figure. Great details, and I love the fish. Next up, we have the Batmobile, which looks 
absolutely fantastic. I love this design. It looks really, really well detailed, especially considering this is basically minifigure scale. So it's very impressive of how the designer was able to get so many details in. You'll also notice that when you spin the tires, the flame piece on the backside also turns at the same time, gives, giving it a nice effect. Next, we have by far one of my favorite features, these gun turrets just popping out, breaking off part of the Batmobile. It looks so good. Then we have the cockpit as well, which has just one sticker detail and a tan seat, kind of tight in there. And unfortunately, you can only use the other Batman suit uh, to get in there. The molded one with the molded cape doesn't fit, unfortunately. So you are limited by figures that can fit in the cockpit. Now, you might notice that when you place the Batmobile within the shadow box and its dedicated area, that it doesn't quite fit when you have the flame piece attached. And so you have to take it off. But where do you put the flame piece? Well, Lego's thought about that. And honestly, this is so great. I love this Easter egg. There's a hidden compartment on the backside where, yes, you just simply take this off and it's a dedicated area to put your flame. This is also a great place to put any other accessories that you don't want to be seen anywhere else in the Batcave. I love little hidden areas like this. Now moving on to the exterior slash interior of the Batcave, let's take a look at the silhouette part, the big silhouette of the Batman logo. First off, you can see there's little bats and stalactites hanging off the top side, which look really good. Nice little details like this really add to a set like this, which can definitely be overtaken by all of that black and dark gray. But I think LEGO did a really good job with the rock work, with the extra little details here. Overall, there's nothing too crazy going on here, but I like that LEGO is using that dark gray to complement the black of the silhouette silhouette Batman logo. You can even see it showing through around the outside edges to really make it known that this is the Batman logo on the outside of the shadow box. So making our way into the physical Batcave now, on the bottom side, you'll notice a bunch of different tools for Batman to work on the Batmobile with. There's an area here that you can put a bunch of minifigures if you want. I'm just gonna put Batman here because I think he's you know, obviously gotta work on that Batmobile. Gotta get it all fixed up to chase the Joker and Penguin. Speaking of which, you can put the villains down here. There isn't really a great place to put them, so I figured this was kind of the best area. You could also put that extra head and top hat as well if you want. Then we're going to follow the ladder up to the first section, which is where Batman's computer system is. And this also reveals the first mechanical function, where if we turn this yellow knob on the backside, it turns Bruce Wayne's chair in a full 360 degrees, which is a blast to do. This is a bunch of fun. Not only that, but we have a secondary chair for either Alfred, Catwoman, or maybe Robin if you want to get that from another set. Alfred, of course, I think should be over here. Next on the left and right side, we have a couple different computer monitors with various information. Then we have another mechanical function where if we twist this, this actually moves the computer monitor. It's actually a giant sticker that is being moved behind these different areas well executed in my opinion. And then above that, we have a nice little tucked away cave area for some bats, which of course makes sense, it's Batman. After this, we'll make our way up to the next level, which is an area that holds a bat suit. If you turn on this light brick on the back side, you'll notice that there's a little porthole that kind of previews the suit. And then if we turn this mechanical crank, it'll release this door downwards. And this is awesome. I love this extra little feature of hiding the bat suit within this area that looks great. Now next, we can't have Batman fighting without his important battering. So where are those hiding? Well, if we turn this dial, that opens up some of Batman's weapons, which is really cool. You can also put some extra accessories here in those bottom drawers. Love this area. Next, if we swing over into the middle section, you'll notice the Batman logo built out of Lego, utilizing some snot technique there. Great. And then we make our way to the final function where if we want the Batmobile to exit the Bat Cave, there's actually a garage door where you can lift up and locks into place. You can have the Batmobile come flying out of the Bat Cave, which is great. And then if we just simply click that lever, it goes flying down. And that is all the mechanical features. There's a ton in this set. Lastly, on the top side, there's just some kind of detailed grill plates. Nothing crazy to say here. I do wish those were enclosed because dust will kind of get into the Batcave because of those plates being exposed. Not a huge deal. Lastly, I just want to show the Batcave versus some other sets. So here's the newly released Rivendale. Now this is a $500 set versus a $400 set, but regardless, you can kind of get an idea of the scale of the Batcave when you see these two sets side by side. Also granted, the Rivendale set has way more minifigures. Also just for fun, here's the brick built action figures, which look really strange in my opinion, but again, hopefully gives you an idea of scale. Next, I have the Marvel Hulkbuster armor, which is like a $450 set, very overpriced but it does still look pretty big compared to the Batcave. 
Next, I have two $400 sets side by side, Lion Knight's Castle versus the Batcave. Kind of the same, not really, but they are still big builds and they definitely still look big next to each other. So hopefully I've shown all the different functions and features as well as all the crazy details inside the shadow box. Personally, I love this concept. I love the crazy amount of mechanical functions that are also included in this set. And I love the fact that you can display it so easily. So to be completely transparent with you guys, honestly, I don't even know how to quite review a set like this. This is just so different. You know, obviously I can look at the piece count. I can look at many figures, size, weight, whatever. But this truly is a different Lego set than anything I've reviewed really in the last couple of years. This is just so out there as a concept and I think that's in itself valuable. I mean, tell me that this isn't awesome. Opening up a bat cave like this in a clamshell aspect is just so unique, interesting, and refreshing. That's kind of the biggest thing is this, this whole concept is so refreshing to me. I thought I wouldn't like this, honestly. I, I was very confused when I read rumors that it would be a big book. I'm like, what? Why would you make a bat cave into a, like a book kind of thing? That doesn't make any sense. But now I get it. Now that I've built it, I've played with it, <laughs> this thing is a lot of fun. And then the cherry on top is the playability factor. Yes, the set displays very well. It closes up and it doesn't take up that much space either. But when you want to open this set up and relive, you know, those nostalgic 2006 Lego Batman days, maybe you played the video game, maybe you had those original sets, maybe you're a big fan of the movie that this is based on, but man, this thing is fun to play with. I absolutely love moving around Bruce Wayne. You know, I feel like I'm just replaying Forest Fire 101 stop motion animations in my head. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I really think there's something here for everybody. If you're a fan of Lego or you're a fan of Batman or you happen to be both, which I'm sure there's a majority out there that are both Batman and Lego fans, this thing is going to satisfy you. In my personal opinion, given that you're getting a lot of exclusive figures, you're getting a lot of Lego brick here. I mean, you look, we turn this thing around. This is just solid brick for the most part. Yes, there's like a few panels of one gap there, but this is a lot of Lego being utilized in this set. Not, not many plates, not many you know panels or whatever. Bricks, you get a lot of Lego bricks and you can feel it and in the weight. You know, the box itself was super heavy. The set itself is very heavy. It is a big build. But believe it or not, it also wasn't that bad to build either. I am used to building these colors as well, given that I'm a Lego Star Wars fan. Batman colors and Lego Star Wars kind of go together very well, except for the yellow. We don't see much yellow in Star Wars. So with a lot of Lego bricks, a good build experience, great Lego minifigures, just a really great concept in general, I think this thing is cool. I think it's worth it. I think it's worth that $400. So let me know what you guys think down below, what you think of the Batcave. Should it have been based on something different? Do you dislike the concept? Do you feel like there's a lack of minifigures? Very curious down below. I think Lego hit all the right notes, personally speaking, but of course you have your own opinion and I'm very curious to see what you guys have to say down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks to Lego for sending this set over for a review. Hope you guys have a great, wonderful day and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. You okay? On your laptop? That's okay. That's not good. Need help?